Friends, our brothers and sisters in the Vatican started a Marian activity yesterday that will last until today to commemorate the anniversary of the final apparition of Our Lady at Fatima, Portugal. Let us then revisit the story of faith and confidence in Our Lady represented to us by the three young shepherds. The Pontifical Council for Promoting the New Evangelization organized this Marian weekend in the Vatican. It is in line with the Year of Faith celebrations proposed earlier by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. The theme of the activity is, Blessed are you for believing. For true enough, the Blessed Mother was blessed by her faith in God as attested to in the Scripture. Today, Pope Francis is expected to lead devotees and pilgrims in praying the Holy Rosary to be followed by a Holy Mass at St. Peter's Square. Now, let us turn to the apparition. According to the three visionaries, Lucia and her cousins Jacinta and Francisco, a beautiful lady, brighter than the sun, appeared to them while they were shepherding in Cova di Iria. She later introduced herself as the Lady of the Rosary. The Lady, according to the young seers, would appear to them every 13th of the month, from May to October 1917. She would tell them to constantly pray, especially the Rosary, to make acts of penance and reparation, and personal sacrifices to save sinners. She also shared what would popularly be called the Three Secrets of Fatima. At the final apparition in October 1917, before a crowd of about 70,000 people, what was called the Miracle of the Sun occurred. According to the witnesses, the sun changed colors and rotated like a wheel. The three children, however, did not reveal the secrets at that moment. They had to wait for the appointed time. The Bishop of the Diocese of Leira Fatima, His Excellency Jose Alves Correira da Silva, formed a commission to study the case and to begin a canonical inquiry. In October 1930, the bishop announced it worthy of belief and permitted officially the cult of Our Lady of Fatima. Almost 10 years later, Lucia, who by now was a nun at the Dorothean convent in Spain, wrote to Pope Pius XII. And for the first time, she disclosed the secrets and pleaded with him to act on them, namely, the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, done in 1942. Popes Paul VI and John Paul II did a similar consecration. Francisco and Jacinta, however, no longer witnessed this, as they had died in 1919 and 1920 respectively due to a flu pandemic that swept through Europe during that time. They were beatified in the year 2000. Now, the secrets or messages have an eschatological theme as well as those of conversion and church persecution. Sister Lucia, who later transferred to the discalced Carmelite order, wrote in her memoirs that they had been given, first, a vision of a great sea of fire into which demons and human souls alike were plunged, and secondly, to save these souls, devotion to the Immaculate Heart must be established. It will lead to an era of peace. The third message was published in the year 2000. The children saw a bishop dressed in white, together with other clergy and religious men and women, climbing a steep mountain 
as though being persecuted. I know these are rather alarming messages, but we have to remember that the Blessed Mother also teaches us to cling to the faith and act according to Jesus' instructions. Besides, she offers to us her Immaculate Heart, where we can take refuge. O Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us.